Most of my videos are about early and World War I aircraft and aviation pioneers that are at least moderately well known. However, in addition to those, there are other designs and designers that are largely forgotten, which nonetheless deserve attention. These will be highlighted in a segment I am calling a Forgotten Aircraft. The Papin and Rui Géropter is one of those oddities of aeronautical engineering that was years before its time, and having briefly surfaced, vanished into history, making barely a ripple. Nonetheless, it is a fascinating attempt at vertical flight, because while the concept of the helicopter wasn't new in 1911, the Géropter featured only one rotating blade. In 1911, Alphonse Papin and Didier Rouy obtained French patents 440,593 and 440,594 for their invention, and later obtained U.S. patent 1,133,660 in 1915. The Géropter was characterized in the contemporary French journal La Nature in 1914 as un boomerang géant, a giant boomerang. Their Géropter was based on the sycamore seed, in which a single blade extends from the seed to spin it, thus generating lift, and so slow its descent as it falls, allowing it to travel away from the parent tree if the wind direction favours it. Design work commenced in 1911 and went on until 1914, at which point Papin and Rouy actually built it. The basic idea was that an engine powered a fan to draw in and force it out down the length of a single long airfoil shaped blade, exiting through a nozzle at the trailing edge of the tip. The blade would turn rapidly and the gyroscopic force of the motor would lift the blade into a positive angle of attack. To prevent the occupant from spinning wildly, the pilot's position was a drum-like nacelle centred on the axis of rotation. It was mounted on ball bearings and was centred against four horizontal rollers. The pilot controlled a separate swivelling air duct to keep his drum-shaped seat from moving with the blade and to provide forward thrust in flight. The engine served not only as a power plant, but as a counterbalance to the blade so that the centre of gravity was located in the pilot's nacelle. Construction of Papin and Rouy's Giroptère began in February 1914 and was completed in June of the same year. The prototype was named Chrysalide. Constructed of moulded wood, the Giroptère was beautifully built with compound curves and a smooth sweep of its single long airfoil shaped blade. The fabric covered blade was hollow and approximately 5.9 meters long and 1.33 meters wide, giving it an area of about 12 square meters. The blade was counterbalanced by an 80 horsepower 9 cylinder Le Rhone rotary engine mounted on its back. The pilot occupied a nacelle between the blade and engine. The bottom of the nacelle included a structure to support the machine while it was on the ground or act as a float when on water. Spinning at 1200 revolutions per minute, the fan produced an output of 7 cubic meters of air per second. The air, along with the engine's hot exhaust for thermal expansion, was propelled along the hollow blade from which it escaped through an L-shaped nozzle on the tip of the trailing edge at a speed of 100 meters per second. Testing was delayed due to the outbreak of World War I and did not take place until 31st of March 1915 on Lake Cerci near puy en auchois in eastern France. Unfortunately, a rotor speed of only 47 rpm was achieved instead of the 60 rpm which had been calculated as necessary for takeoff. In addition, the rotary engine used was not powerful enough. It had originally been planned to use a 100 horsepower car engine which had proved unobtainable. Also, it was too heavy. As designed, it would have weighed 380 kilograms, but as built, it was 100 kilograms heavier. Consequently, despite the addition of lead weights in an attempt to achieve stability, it was wildly out of balance and the blade smashed repeatedly into the water, damaging itself and shaking up the pilot. Despite this, the wing was still intact. 
The generally expressed opinion regarding the failure of the Giropter states that the aircraft was unbalanced. There are a couple of possible reasons for this. The first is that the weight of the wing was not properly balanced by the engine. Secondly, asymmetrical lift, especially at low revolutions, could have caused vertical oscillation with the results mentioned. A military commission observing the test determined that such a machine would not aid the war effort and halted further evaluation. The Giropter remained at Late Cercy until it was sold for scrap in 1919.